Hello again folks, I hope you're keeping well. Been a strange couple of days here for me. I yeah, was out yesterday in a woodland that was a lot of pine in it. Um, old pines as well, quite big trees with a dense green, rich green background. After a period of several days of quite heavy rain, snow, the tree trunks were black, soaked, wet through. Stop it. And uh, the, the bare trees that remained look all scraggly, a bit like this fella behind me. And I went through yesterday basically and I, I came out the other end of it and I didn't shoot a shot. Nothing worth a peanut, absolutely nada. And it wasn't a problem, I kind of half expected it. And that's a little bit of what today's about. I just want to share this, I suppose the change in mindset I personally have to adopt in order to keep shooting into winter because coming out of a beautiful autumn like the one we've just had fantastic it's been amazing this year but now the trees are bare the opportunities for shooting those nice wide shots or those broader canopies and rich colours mostly gone obviously we've still got some fern left and we've still got some bramble left and we've still got some holly berries but that's not going to keep me going right through winter so what do we do how do we overcome it what do we shoot different how do we change the mindset and i think that's it for me this last couple of days i've been giving some thought to the, this video just commenting on it it's just reminded me how much of this game is mindset it's about how we feel i've said in previous videos I can't shoot hangry and it's very true I really can't if my mood for any reason is not balanced and stress-free I find it exceedingly difficult to give the environment the attention it needs my photography suffers I don't enjoy it and when I know what the consequence is I tend to not bother if that's how I feel then I'll leave my camera where it is and save it for the next day now winter has the potential with all this lost light and lost colour to be a very difficult time to shoot, very difficult time to find subjects and your mindset can get a hit. It can be a, an opportunity to down tools. It's cold outside, it's not as comfortable, things get wet. You've got pressures on your time because there's not much of it available. The light's here for only two or three hours each day. So it's easy to use multiple excuses to not pick your camera up. However, however, this can be the most magical time of year. I can't say I've shot my best shots through winter. I'd like to say I could, but that's just because I'm, I'm passionate about photography, I suppose, and passionate about nature, particularly the woodland. So it presents different opportunities and in order to capitalize on them, I need to change my mindset and if I do that successfully then the opportunities will start to come but they don't come day one and I'm considering this to be day one this is my first winter shoot and I'm only here for perhaps an hour an hour and a half before I lose light so today is just about me getting into the frame of mind thinking about what it is I'm finding interesting trying to consider whether or not to bring my drone and whether or not there are things here that I can really invest some time and effort into. I'm going to wait till that plane's passed and then I'll bring you back. It's not the birds, it's something else. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to start getting into details and talking about what it is I start to look for and where I see opportunities and all that jazz. Really I just wanted to say that there's a dog now. If that plane's coming back, that's me. Um, um, I think it is, you know, I think that plane's coming back. Circled round to just come and hover over the top of me. I'll give it two minutes. I'll bring you back. Oh, the birds as well. What is going on? So, I don't want to dive into details. 
suggestions about what to shoot, where to shoot. That's up to us all individually, isn't it? What we find interesting, what we find motivating, where we find beauty and what it is we're trying to produce. What I will do is I'll say, I swing as I think a lot of landscape photographers do. I sort of swing towards more intimate shots where I've got more control over the whole frame. And sometimes that takes me into abstract. So I look for, I'm more open-minded about patterns and I'm more eager to jump on them when I find them. What, what, <laughs> it's such a complicated subject. It gives me an opportunity to produce the type of work that motivates me. And one of those things is to produce multi-shot studies of single subjects. So I like triptychs, I like three shot studies of one specific subject. I post-process them equally, I don't pay any extra attention to them, but I produce them as studies. It's a study of the season. It's not a consolation prize to me, it's something that really motivates me. I love the, the, the diversity that we get as far as winter is concerned. So any little tiny pops of colour are quite dramatic. When in autumn, it's all dramatic. So, in one respect, it's no different, and in another respect, it's very different. But there's that shift, there's that shift in how we view it that takes place. We have to look for things in different lights, in different ways, and it can be a very motivating process. I said I wasn't going to get into specifics, and I've started getting into specifics. So, it's just about a shift. It's about coming out and looking at the environment through different eyes, seeking out different subjects. We can always shoot the environment, the environmental light, that's always with us. And we can always shoot form and shape. But in winter, perhaps more so. Again, I'm just edging towards talking about what we can and what we can't shoot. That's up to each of us individually. Really, uh, it really is a, a difficult time to work through how you're going to do things different, what you're going to seek out, and where you see value. That's, that's the bottom line. It is one challenging time of year. It really is difficult. But we can't be afraid of hard work. We can't be afraid of the struggle. It's a case of finding new eyes, doing new stuff, seeing a new way, and I'm just about to begin that for my winter season. What do you do different? How do you change your frame of mind? Do you just move to more intimate shots? Is it a case of extracting the background and going in close? Do you aim for colour? Do you aim, do you go monochrome? I love mono in winter. Do you go gothic? Do you like to drag all the light out of the subjects and try and find some really meaty, monstrous stuff? What is it? What do you go for? I'd be really interested to know. Comments below, please. I'll keep hunting. I'll see what I can come across. And if I find anything, I'll bring you back, explain what I'm thinking about, and then uh, I'll uh, take you from there. See you in a bit. <laughs> This whole photography thing plays with your mind, doesn't it? It's like... <laughs> it's like the ultimate puzzle. Without, without a solution. There's no shortcuts, there's no pieces. It's just one huge puzzle. And I'm really enjoying just walking around with my eyes open uh, and looking at stuff and considering it for its for different things. Purpose of this vlog really is to share that message. 
to look at things with new eyes, look at them for attributes we don't normally consider, like their shape or their texture, their relationship to what's around them. I'm absolutely loving this morning. It's just awesome. Although it's probably now just after midday. Half past 12. The mist has lifted. It was coming in when I first got here. It was just getting denser and denser. And my hopes were high that it was going to carry on for a while. But no bother. I mean, it's, it's started to lift. and The light is actually a little brighter. It feels a little lighter. And I'm just hovering around here in the hope that that continues for a few minutes. Because I have a composition. And... It's very different to what I would have been shooting recently. Um, and I actually started off, I'm going to try and show you where I am, because I'm sort of a bit... Behind me is a root ball, the size of a house, or a small house. And it, it was a tree that fell recently, and it had a huge V-shape to it, with equal limbs on both sides, or the left-hand side is a bit chunkier, but similar limbs both sides one went up on the right one went up on the left and they are left and right of me right here right now so let me show you the root ball the size of that fella I say recently it's a while ago, but relatively recently. Hop over here, and let me hop over here. Oh, it takes a little bit of doing. Easy. Oh. Don't want that, the kisser. So let me explain this composition. Let's get one in for today at least. In the background over here, we've got quite a nice mixture of dense shrubbery. You see a little bit of the sky, but Really, there isn't too much. It's quite a nice backdrop. We've got this beautiful copper here, and then we've got this bright green moss on these two fallen limbs. So, can we find a composition in there? And I wasn't really happy with it. So, there was a bit of symmetry. There was a nice leading line off, but the backdrop was okay, but it just didn't do much for me. So what I decided to do, I'm stood here between righty and lefty and righty he goes off beautifully like so see there's a huge fork in there and there's some nice branches leading out and lefty over here he's got this one and keeps trying to give me a kiss but the main part of his trunk goes up and there's a vertical sprout here and there's another tall trunk that leads off nicely up to where there's another tree we've got a nice bit of back backdrop but there is some highlights over here and it kind of detracts from this central theme. So then what I've done is I've gone a bit closer because at 2850 mil I'd be shooting what I see. I'd be getting in about that. But at 28 mil I'm actually getting more like what you're seeing. So I'm capturing a far wider image and as a result it's introducing the highlights over here. So to get rid of those, what I've done is I've moved my camera to the left-hand side, twisted it that way, dropped my frame to try and make this more of the composition, to, to extract the interest out of this subject. The point of this, the point of this composition, is not to create an award-winning shot. It's for me to become familiar with the light, the environment, finding new compositions. And that's the thing I'm... I've been hoping to try to share through today's vlog is that if we make efforts to look at things differently we start to find new compositions, different compositions and they're compositions that suit winter they're compositions that will help us extract the most from this environment when it's sparse I hope <laughs> that's what we try to do isn't it so on camera I settled on looks something like this so I'm shooting at 28 mil, 28 f2. We've got the right hand log here with the beautiful green moss 
leading up to the top right hand third. We have roughly the top third of the image with the highlights in it, the bottom two thirds with shadows. If you saw Thursday's video this last week talking about the rule of thirds, you'll understand why I'm talking about it in this light. And I'm going to be trying consciously to do more of this. I'm going to try and encourage myself to shoot more in line, in keeping with the rule of thirds as it was originally intended. So that's the right hand limb, thirds related, light and shadow related, and the left hand limb just ekes out this bottom left hand corner, bringing the eye up to a rough, a rough similar central part of the, the, the image. Excuse me, coffee burps. We've got some colour down here we can extract. We have some beautiful green that we can emphasise. We have light that we can play with. We have shadows that we can play with. And I hope this will produce a respectable image. It's a challenge, this. It's a real challenge, but it's a really, really, really cool one. It's very motivating. I find, I, I do speak for people and I'm sorry, I don't intend to, I just, just think if it's interesting to me, somebody's going to find it interesting too. So I hope, I hope it helps. I hope, I hope you put your boots on and clear off. Pick your gear up, get off out of there. Stop sitting and playing the Xbox, PlayStation or whatever. And if you don't have a console but you still haven't got out, oh, days like this, man. We really miss it if we don't. It's worth the effort, even if you don't come away with any shots, just to come and sit on a wet tree, you know, a wet Harris. The other thing, I'm, I'm going to say it. <laughs> I don't know if it's a tip, I don't know if it's just me, but what, what, one thing I find that's particularly helpful in winter, especially at this change to, to my shooting habits, one thing I find really helpful is to stand still. Don't go walking too too far. Don't don't go covering miles and miles hoping for something to appear because the chances are it's not going to. Find a plot, mooch about, explore the environment, and to do that you don't need to use your feet. We just need to use our peepers, and that's where we can start to get cultured towards this changing season. I don't know if the message has come across today. <laughs> Any photographers out there, landscape woodland photographers, you'll know the problem with the change over to winter from autumn and I guess you'll all have ways of coping with it, of dealing with it and I haven't really shared mine other than acknowledging it needs to happen, I need to make a change. Maybe that's it, maybe that's all we need to do, we just need to acknowledge it and then come out here with a more open mind and less, less expectations then we can let happen what happens and enjoy the time here. You know, I'm going to carry on walking for a little while, but I'm going to focus on the environment and thinking about what I need to think about. So I'm going to wrap this one up now in talk terms. Thank you, somebody said from the back of the room. And I'm going to pop up some images from today. This one, if this is it, this is it. But if I pick anything else up, I'll include those and or one or two of those and uh, draw up the usual gallery. This has been a challenging vlog on a challenging day during a challenging time in a challenging environment with challenging subjects and challenging light with a camera that's got a new lens on it that's also challenging me. I think that sums it up. It's been quite a challenge today, but a very, very fruitful one. I've really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed my time just being stood still in here, to be honest. It's great, just fantastic. So, I hope there's something in here worth a turkey and I hope somebody gets some value from it and I'll try and do better next time. But uh, I think for today, folks, I'm going to call it a wrap and as I say, I'm going to, I'm going to buckle down and have a bit of an explore. So, I'm going to thank you very much for watching. I ask you to please take care of one another and as ever, if you can't be good, just be careful and I'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye for now.